Well, hello everybody and welcome back to our weekly Bible study here at King's Revival Church International. My name is Gareth Noble and I have the privilege of sharing this week's lesson with each and every one of you today. And I'm so excited today we're going to uh, finish our series on fear and what an honor it is to be able to share the word of God with you. And I want to thank my pastor, Pastor Dil Kumar, for giving me this opportunity uh, to share the word of God with all of you today. And, and thank you for, for connecting with us. And if this is your very first time today, you are our very special guest. And I want to thank you for, for joining us today. And I know that God is going to do something great within your life today. As we jump into the word of God, it's the word of God, the living God, the, the living word from the living God. Hallelujah. That changes us from the inside out. And we've been looking at fear of uh, week one. We looked at the fear of rejection. Week two, we looked at the fear of failure. Week three, which was last week, we looked at the fear of intimacy, how to overcome those forms of fear. And today we are going to learn how to overcome the fear of losing control, the fear of losing control. So if you have your Bibles and your notebooks and your pen, quickly get them because we are going to take some notes and uh, we're going to allow God's word to, to change us. And so the, the scripture, the main scripture that we've been looking at is 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear. Fear doesn't come from God. God doesn't give you fear. He doesn't have fear to give you. But rather, God has given you, He's given you love, He's given you power, and He's given you a sound mind. Love, power, and a sound mind. So that tells us that God has given us the resources to overcome fear. He's, he's equipped us, He's given us resources, and He's enabled us to overcome. God has given us the, the Word. God has given us the Holy Spirit. God has given us the blood of Jesus. He's given us the weapons. He's given us our confession. God has given us so many resources. He's given us the authority, you know. So we got to learn how to tap into these resources to walk in victory. So that's what we're doing here today. The Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear, but rather love power and a sound mind and many people are living with what the bible calls an anxious heart there's a heaviness about them there's something that's kind of weighing weighing them down and that's making it difficult for for them to cope and it's it's difficult to do what god wants you to do and the reality is in your in your heart and in your mind right now there's something that is significantly bothering you something that you're worried about now this is what the bible says about having this this heaviness of heart having an anxious heart in proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25 it says anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down but a good word makes him glad a good word makes him glad. The, the good word is the good news, which is the gospel. Hallelujah. The good news will make you, make you glad. The good news will fill you with the faith to overcome the world. So uh, uh, it weighs a person's down. An anxious heart weighs a person down. And there's many people out there right now, at this moment, it's like you're weighted down by heaviness and you've got a certain concern within your life. Now, how do you know if you have an anxious heart well i'm going to ask you a few questions and if you raise your hand if you say yes gareth you know i i do that sometimes well you might be walking around with with an anxious heart okay you ready for the first one are you rattled are you rattled when things don't go as expected when things don't turn out the way you want them to turn out are you shaken up are you rattled are you moved are you easily swayed you know so are you are you rattled do you often worry about things that are beyond your control do you worry about these things that are out of your control do you lose sleep over pressing issues you know are you rolling about your bed 
every night and you can't get any any sleep because you worried about certain things well that means that you have an anxious heart is it is it hard for you to turn off your mind because you're constantly thinking constantly worried about a situation and circumstances so you 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 constantly um uh you know you're thinking and you're overworking things in your mind does the unknown intimidate you do you often imagine the worst case scenario i know i i'm guilty of of a few things and that's one of the things that stands out for me is that you know when i think about a situation that i need to go into or someone that i need to confront i think of the worst thing that can possibly happen and people that that are that want to control everything and everyone they show up in a certain way and we need to identify controlling behaviors within our life to see if we're you know controlling and we want to stay in control all the time so maybe it shows up in in that we're overly aggressive because you want things done a certain way and you try to control events you are overly aggressive with other people because you have to have it done just your way and there's no other way it has to be done exactly the way you want it to be done so you're overly aggressive because it's 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 all about you and and your thing and another behavior is that we're always competing with others and we see everything in terms of winners and losers so if if i don't get have it my way i see myself as a loser and when i do have things my way i see myself as a winner and the lens is that you look through is, is everything is 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 winning and is about winning and and losing and so at the end of the day you're actually competing with people another way that 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 it shows up in the behavior is that we manage people in high controlling ways in other words we micromanage people we got to tell people what to do every single moment every single second and you know we don't just control our lives but we're controlling everyone around us maybe you've worked with a manager or a leader that that has those tendencies maybe you've you know you've you have a family member that's like that maybe you're like that i don't know and but we know we got to be aware of those things and we overlook uh, other people's insights and their opinions and their aspirations because you don't care about other people now i'm worried about having things my way and so we 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 push other other people away there we don't want to listen to them anymore because it's what i want to achieve and what i want to get out of life and then many times another one of those behaviors is that we always believe our own press because it's all about you focused on you and your goal and you don't hear anything or anyone and so you believe everything that you that you say now the reason that so many people out there fear losing control is because we live under the illusion that if we do everything just right if we do it our way you know if we do exactly exactly the way i wanted to do then the events will turn out the way i want them to do and that's kind of like an illusion and many times the things that we desire to control the most in other words the things that are most precious to us are the very things that are most out of control in our in our lives and so that's why so many people have actually learned those that are anxious they've actually learned to to live with an anxious heart and they don't even realize that their anxiety is actually weighing them down so we're going to look today how we're going to overcome this fear of losing control and we're going to learn how to trust god we're going to learn how to let go and allow god to be god within our lives jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 and 8 Listen to what the Bible says. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Okay, so the Bible says there we see in verse 5 is that when we trust in ourselves, it's actually your heart turns away from God because now you're not trusting God anymore, you're trusting in yourself. Verse 6 He's like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Verse 7 Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when the heat comes. He does not fear when the heat comes. And I know we're in a time where there's lots of heat. 
We're, we're experiencing uh, uh, heat in this time. It's not easy. We're going through some challenges. But the Bible says that those who trust in God will not fear when the heat comes. For its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought. He's not anxious. We looked earlier on that, um, that a heavy heart, that anxious that heart, it weighs you down. Well, those who trust in God, they're not anxious when they see the drought, in the year of drought, in the year of difficulty, in the year of challenges. They don't, they, they, they're not anxious, but they will, they will not cease to bear fruit. So in the drought, in the heat, they, they're bearing fruit, they're fruitful, their leaves remain green. And the key there is to trust God. And so we're going to look to see how, how do we actually trust God. And so how do we overcome the fear of losing control? If you're taking notes, point number one, we must take our minds off of the what ifs of fear. We must take our minds off of the what ifs of fear so we don't put our mind on our situation and the problems and the and you know we focus on 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 um what's keeping us from god amen we got to take our our minds off of the what ifs of fear you know the what ifs what if the economy turns south what if they sell the company that i'm working for what if i lose my job you know what if my spouse is unfaithful. Uh, what if the doctor gives us a bad report? What if our marriage doesn't go the distance? What if we can't have children? What if we have eight children? Come on now. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take our mind off of the what ifs. You know that worst case scenario that I was talking about earlier on. And in Luke 21 verse 14, Jesus, this is what Jesus said. He said, make up your mind not to worry. Make up your mind not to worry. When do we not worry? The Bible says, look there, beforehand, before the situation even arises, we must make up our minds not to worry. Well, why does Jesus tell us not to worry? Well, because worry never changes anything for good. <laughs> worry doesn't change anything for good. Worrying is going to change things for the worse. All right? Because when, when, we, when we worry, it'll affect your, our, our health. You know, when we worry, it affects our relationships with, with people and with God. When we worry, um, your ability to be in, in, in engaged in, in action becomes, be, becomes distorted right so worrying doesn't it doesn't change anything for your good you know when you do a research in the bible when you look up the word worry in in the niv in the new international version at least there are two words in front of 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 every, where you see the word worry there are two words in front of the word worry guess what those words are do not hallelujah do not worry. Come on now. And that's why Jesus asked this question in Matthew 6, 27. He says, And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? Who, can, who by being anxious can add more time to his life? Well, we know that the answer is, is nobody. <laughs> Worrying is not going to add anything, any, any more time, any length to to, to your life. In fact, it's probably going to take more from you than, than, than adding on you. And there's a funny story about a man. And this man, he worried all the time. And, uh, you know, when, when things weren't going good, he would worry. When things were going good, he also worried because, you know, now he was thinking, you know, when, when are things going to go bad? You know, and he decided, I'm going to go and see a counselor. And he, he, he goes to the counselor, to the doctor, and he says, you know what, doctor, please help me. I worry all the time. I constantly worry, worry, worry. Help me. What can I do? And so the doctor said, you know what, mm, I, think, I think I can help you. Here's what, I want. Here's what I want you to do. Take a piece of paper, and I want you to write down anything and everything that you are potentially going to worry about it. Okay? But here's the catch. You're not allowed to worry about it when you write it down. 
you simply write it down you make a list on on the piece of paper okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set time aside one hour um, every single week for you not to worry okay for sorry for you to worry all right so we'll decide okay Wednesdays between 1 and 2 that's when you're gonna take out your piece of paper you're going to look at each and every point and what you're going to do is you're just going to worry 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 for that whole hour you worry everything that is within you all that you have i want you to worry about that thing every wednesday between one and two every week is that okay with you can you do that and you know what the man he looked at the doctor and he said doctor that is the dumbest thing i've ever heard in my whole life i can't believe i'm paying you money for all of this <laughs> all right that's quite funny because the reality is many of us we're doing it all the time and so the doctor wanted this man to realize that you know what you're doing it anyway you you worrying all the time and it doesn't make sense it doesn't help you to worry about everything Matthew 6 27 and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life an anxious heart it weighs a person down therefore i must first of all take my mind off of the what ifs of fear i will not worry because worry doesn't change anything for good and you know what the enemy tries to use fear to keep you from god's best whenever fear tries to enter your life allow the faith of god to break through the wall of fear because a lot of times on the other side of of your fear is the blessing of god come on on the other side of your fear you discover god's blessings which leads me to point number two place your mind on the promises of faith that's number two place your mind on the promises of faith so first of all i take my mind off of the what ifs and i put my mind on the promises of god isaiah 26 verse 3 you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because because he trusts in you because he trusts in you you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you the supernatural peace of god which transcends all human understanding will give you perfect peace in the middle of the heat that heat that we spoke about when you trust god when you put your mind on the promises of god when your mind is fixed and focused on the things of god when we trust in the lord with all our heart with all our mind with all our soul with all our strength when we trust in the lord and lean not on our own understanding but in all our ways acknowledge him peace will come amen whenever we are worried and afraid the truth is when we're worrying at that moment we're not trusting in god that's actually what's happening when we worry when we're anxious that that tells us it should be like an alarm bell going off it should say i'm not trusting god i'm not trusting god when we're worrying i'm not trusting god but the moment we trust god that's when the peace the peace comes psalm 9 verse 10 and those who know your name put their trust in you for you O lord have not forsaken those who seek you hallelujah and those who know your name put their trust in you psalm 22 verse 4 in you our fathers trusted they trusted and you delivered them they trusted and you delivered them you see my part our part your part is that we need to trust god i trust god you deliver that's god's part I trust that's my part God's part is he's gonna deliver you but you need to trust God well how do I trust God by handing the situation over over to him okay I love Hebrews chapter 11 that's the 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 whole of faith where we read about all the 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 men and women of God in the Bible that lived by faith and if you look at a few of those examples where they talk about these faithful um, people in Hebrews 11, for example, we look at verse 8. By faith, 
Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So yeah, we're talking about people of faith. And he's saying that, you know what? Uh, Abraham, he obeyed. He trusted even when he didn't know where he was going. You see, it's easy to trust when things are going well. Anyone can trust when things are going well, when things are going your way. But it's when things are not going your way, when things are tough, when things are challenging. That's when we really need to trust God. And so, yeah, we see that Abraham obeyed. He trusted even though he didn't know where he was going. Yeah, Hebrews 11 verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Yeah, God gives Abraham the promise, his one and only son. And now God says, okay, I want you to sacrifice the, the, the gift, the promise. It didn't make sense. But you know what? He trusted God anyway in a, this, the, the tough situation, in the heat. You know, we're talking about that, the time of heat, when the challenges come, when the fires come. That's when you have to trust God. Verse 24, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. So Moses chose God's will above the easy high life of, of being Pharaoh's son, of living the palace life. Because Moses knew that there was more. God, Moses knew that there was, there, there, there was much more walking in purpose. You know, there were better things to come. Not just fleeting uh, 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 material possessions and, 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 and living, living, living the life, the easy life, right? And so, yeah, we see that by faith, the Bible says, by faith, Moses chose rather to suffer affliction. He chose the things of God. Verse 25, choosing rather to suffer and choosing the things of God, passing the pleasures of sin. Verse 24 and 25, hallelujah. And so we need to, need, need to learn to trust God even when it doesn't make sense, when it's, when it's tough. That's when we need to, to trust God. 1 Peter 5, 7, the Bible says, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So the Bible says a heavy heart, an anxious heart causes, causes heaviness. We looked in Proverbs. And so the Bible teaches us to cast all your anxieties on him. You know, I used to be a fisherman when I was younger. I loved to fish. And we had to learn how to. The first thing you do, you got to learn how to cast. That means you, you throw that bait out. You, 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 you launching it. God says, listen, launch, cast the heaviness onto me because I care for you. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7 it says, Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Don't be anxious about anything. Hallelujah. And God wants us to take our mind off of the what ifs. Learn to take your mind off of the what ifs. What if this? What if that? What if, you know, worst case scenario? No. Take your mind off of that and put your mind on the promises of faith. Put your, your, your mind on the word of God. Trusting him means that you give him your anxieties. It means that you give him your concerns. Trusting him means that you, that you believe what his word says over what is going on around you and place your mind on what Jesus says. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. When I catch myself worrying, 
when I catch myself being anxious, then the alarm bells start going off. And then I, I, I quickly I realize, you know what, Gareth? I haven't prayed about this situation. This, the things that I'm worrying about, I don't pray about. And then I've got to stop myself and I've and I got to say, okay, Gareth, you know what? Come, let's pray. Let, let's give this situation over to God. Let, let, this thing that's worrying you, this, this thing that's on, your, that's on your mind that you're being anxious about, you haven't brought it to God. You haven't given it over to Him. You haven't cast it to Him. You haven't prayed about this thing, you know? And then I, I pray, I, I, I pray and I pray until I get that, that release and I, and I feel that, you know what? It's settled. I've broken through in prayer. I've stood on the scriptures of God and now the peace of God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. You see, it's supernatural. <laughs> when we learn to trust God, when we learn to pray about everything, and it, it's supernatural. Supernaturally, the peace of God through the, 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 the Holy Spirit. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. That love, that power, that clear mind, that, that peace will guard my heart and will guard my mind when I learn to give it over to Him, when I cast my burdens on Him, when I, when I pray, when I release, when I trust God, that is when the peace will come. Even when the heat comes, even when, the, when you see the drought, you don't have to be worried. You don't have to be anxious. God will bring you peace even in the midst of, of the storm. Hallelujah. Well, I pray that you've been blessed today, church, and uh, I'm going to pray with you. You know, Pastor Dill, he shared a very powerful message over the weekend. Uh, he's, the title was, it's, it's, it's not too late. Now is the time for your salvation. Now, today is the time for your salvation. Today is the time for your miracle. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? The Bible says, now faith is. Now faith is. Now, today is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, now faith is. We're going to trust God. I'm going to trust God with you. And I'm going to pray with you right now. And we're going to trust God for a miracle. Come on, won't you close your eyes with me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Forgive us, for where we have been carrying these burdens. Forgive us for where we have been anxious. Forgive us for where we have been worrying. Your word says that we must not be anxious for anything, but we need to pray about everything. Lord, help us to commit to praying about our lives, our situations, the things that we're going through. Help us to cast. We want to cast these burdens on, onto you, God. And as we pray, I thank you that you'll bring that, that peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray for those listening today for healing. I thank you for healing in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for financial provision right now. Those that need provision, I pray for the provision in Jesus' name. Thank you for finances to come. Thank you, Lord, that you make a way. Thank you for provision in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for families. I pray for the relationships, for marriages, for children. I pray over them right now. And I thank you for your peace in, 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 in the home. I thank you for reconciliation and restoration in every household. Lord, those that have been struggling with fear, those that are anxious, those that are, that are uh, their mind is, 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 is going to and fro. Lord, I pray that you bring the peace. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are the God of peace. I pray your peace into their homes, peace into their hearts, peace into their minds. Lord, I thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your blood that covers everyone listening to this message. Thank you, Jesus, that your blood covers us. Thank you that your Holy Spirit comforts us and empowers us. Lord, we love you. 
We thank you for what you are doing. We receive our miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, church, I pray that you've been blessed today. Thank you for being part of this, this four-part series on fear. And I pray that this, these lessons have helped you. And uh, I'm excited about next week. And uh, we're going to continue with our Bible study. And make sure that you connect with Pastor Deal. Make sure that you, that you uh, catch every message that he preaches. You can find him on, on Facebook and on YouTube. And Pastor always prays for, for, for you after the message. So always wait for, for, for the end of the message where Pastor prays. And uh, we know that his ministry is full of miracles. And I want to encourage you today, don't, don't give up. Um, hang in there. You know, we're in this together. Uh, God, God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. God loves you. And God wants the best for your life. And so I want to encourage each and every one of you today is stay in the Word of God. Stay in prayer. Don't give up. It might be difficult, but God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. He will come through for you. God sees everything. He knows everything. And as we come to Him, God will reward you. God bless you, church. Until next time. Bye-bye for now.